video going. We are now being recorded. And I'd like to welcome you to our first in the CBC OEI Improving Online CTE Pathways Speakers Series. This one, this one on programs in business, online programs in business. Um, as some of you know, most of you know, but not all, our, uh, our IOP, Improving Online Pathways grant is devoted to C, uh, CTE programs, career and technical programs that are moving fully online. We uh, funded 70 grants from 68 colleges. This is a total of $27.5 million awarded in total. Uh, thanks to the people of California, the state legislature and our California chancellor's office, the community college chancellor's office. Um, focusing on two goals to lead to short-term industry valued certificates pathways, again, moving programs to hybrid or hybrid to fully online. And also with an eye to helping create uh, uh, launch pads from our California Online Community College, Calbright, to join the other colleges in larger programs. As I mentioned, we have uh, business programs today from seven colleges. Yuba <laughs> College with a general business program, Shasta College with an ADT in business and accounting, San Diego con Continuing Education with a business IT program, Las Vegas, Las Vegas College, folks. Supervisory Management, Berkeley City College with an entrepreneurship, followed by two more entrepreneur, entrepreneurship programs from Santa Rosa Junior College and Woodland Community College. Each of the individuals will have five to seven minutes to present. If you would, please um, keep your questions either in chat or in your heads, and we'll have 10 minutes at the end to collect your questions. And I think we did find uh, that we could get captioning in case you need it. So I think we are good to go. Shall I call on our first presenter from Ua College? Hi, my name is Liberty Harrison. Um, I work in the um, general business department at uh, Ua College. I also have a um, co-presenter. Brittany Strong, she's also working in the agricultural part of our CTE, um, improving online pathways. Um, I do believe Brittany was going to take the first couple of slides. Hi everybody, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I've got a generator running in the back because we have no power. So I'm just uh, trying to mitigate background noise. Okay, so to begin, uh, Liberty and I worked together on this grant. She was in the business side of things and I was in the agriculture side of things. And there's so much overlap for the both of us with this grant. Uh, to begin our statement of need, our college uh, really does not have a large focus on transfer students. Our larger <clears throat> focus is on students that need to get in, get out, get a job or maybe they need to get in, get out and, and better themselves, better their wages. And so that is our focus and it really tied in well, of course, with the scope of this grant. And a majority of our students at our college are CTE students already. So it's really great that we could expand their options. And additionally, many of them are working with families. So the uh, traditional path of, of going to school during the day just doesn't work for them. And they really do need something different and so this was such a lovely opportunity for our area and we are have just had such a good time working on this grant and and um, are excited to present the details of it to you today uh, next slide please so the project goals were obviously the same as as most is improving online cte pathways for um, for not just working learners, but for anyone who needed to take that route. And we had to address the impact of moving away from, like I stated, traditional forms of instruction to a digital form of instruction, a humanized form of instruction, um, a CTE project-based form of instruction, 
that, that centered around collaboration between instructors and departments and then equity. We mm -hmm. all know how important all of these goals are right now. And it couldn't be more timely for all of us to be wrapping this up. And so <clears throat> that was our, um, our project goals obviously included the regular scope of the grant of developing mm -hmm. certain certificates and courses, but overall this had a really overreaching effect for us. Next slide, please. So this was just a graphic depiction of how um, this grant and our work could be the key to success for some students. Um, mm -hmm. Traditional course offerings aren't, it's not a one size fits all anymore. And it's not just your typical 18 year old student, uh, mm -hmm. high school graduate coming into college anymore. And so this grant uh, expanded their availability, the course offering availability. And so mm -hmm. that is the key to non-traditional student success. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, and I'm gonna turn it over to Liberty. Thank you, Brittany. So um, one of the things uh, students need to know what type of learner they are. Um, COVID-19 has really helped us figure out a lot of uh, issues that, that students are going to be moving forward because most of our college was face-to-face -face prior to this. And so moving over to more of an online base really helped us see some issues. <laughs> so having... Um, the students know what type of learner they are, if they're audio or if they're visual or if they're hands-on or a mixture of any of these, really helps the instructors and the students be able to create that more of that one-on-one -on -one feeling that you can get in your online courses. So we're going to have to work on that um, and work on them communicating that with each instructor. So that's something that we um, is relevant to our students. And um, another thing is students need to know what resources or resources are available to them. We have a lot of online tutoring right now uh, that wasn't available prior to COVID-19 and, and it showed us how we can expand. We've been very resourceful. <laughs> so this has allowed us to learn um, what resources are out there. And if knowing you're an audio learner, knowing what resources that DSPS has for you that can read those, um, the text to you or the projects to you that are in the class are, are great, but the students need to know that those are available to them and how to access them through online. Students need to know about scheduling their time. It's prior to this, you would have most of your classes face-to-face -face and like one or two in the online world. And it was easy to maneuver one class. Well, now that we transferred 90% of our classes at Yuba College are online right now, all of their classes are online. And so the actual carving out those times for five different classes, enough time for, for studying and doing the homework along with the class time and watching lectures or reading lectures or going through those um, is different. So they have to know that. Students also need to know that it takes time to communicate. So these are problems that they're also coming up with. Next slide. Okay, what we've learned, um, one of the biggest obstacles is the newer technology and the classes that are based on technology. Um, OER resources, you know, are not out there. We're having to create them ourselves. Um, so a lot of that is not there. So for technology, it's a little harder. It's a little more difficult. Uh, we also need to increase our equity amongst online learners and the essential, you know, to adopt those um, practices and encourage this mindset because we are transitioning a lot from mostly face-to-face -to, -face to online. So that is um, something, changing that mindset, COVID has helped us do that. Uh, our lower income and students are having problems with gaining internet access, computers, 
and resources to uh, do that. We've had to expand our Wi-Fi at our school and we are having a problem with that. Uh, and, but our biggest one is COVID has shut down all of those fairs and marketing things that we used to do. So that's another one. Okay, next slide. So our accomplishments uh, come fall 2021, we will have an agriculture technology degree and certificate 100% online health services administration degree 100% um, online and an office administration degree and certificate 100% online. 98% uh, online for um, fall 2021 is a human resources degree. This is, uh, we're missing two classes, that's it. And we're trying to focus in trying to just switch those over. We also updated three of our certificate programs and they will be 100% online. That is the medical office procedures, so your medical receptionist, your legal office procedures, which is your um, legal administrative assistant, and just the normal office administrative assistant. During this time, we created five brand new online courses between business and agriculture and 18 uh, converted courses between business and agriculture. All right, uh, Liberty, thank you so much. And now we move on to the program from Shasta College, Business ADT and Accounting. Well, thank you, Bob. Hello, my name is Brianne Burkoshek and I'm from Shasta College. And normally I fill the senior online learning instructional technician role. Uh, for this project, I filled the co-PI and project director shoes. Excuse me. Today, I would like to highlight two programs brought to fully online status. Uh, first is the ADT in business, which had a nearly complete fully online pathway. And the second, the certificate in counting with the bookkeeping emphasis that had an inconsistently offered online pathway. And in fact, the one instructor that had been teaching it uh, had retired and so it hadn't been offered in um, several semesters. All right, before I share the reason why we chose these two pathways, let me share about our district as it may make more sense to know who and where we are. As a rural and geographically large district, Shasta College covers Shasta, Trinity, Tehama, and a piece of Modoc counties, which is about 10,000 square miles, or to put it in a little perspective, slightly larger than the state of Maryland. We have over 28% of our students enrolled in DE courses, and all of our potential fully online pathways, these two programs in particular address local workforce needs. Uh, by increasing the number of online offerings, more students can access the programs, especially the working students and those in remote areas, which we definitely have an abundance of here. Moreover, the accounting positions are often considered recession proof, supporting students through all economic situations. Um, and we really anticipate increased interest in this field of study with the availability of the fully online offerings. Um, I'm really excited that um, we even to have these programs because with our expansive area, we really rely on small business in our remote areas. And so this will really boost our communities. Uh, by focusing on these two pathways, Shasta College is able to reach the following goals to support our student success. Um, first, we expanded access to both programs, um, eliminate the barrier to oral communications and science lab courses for the uh, GE requirements. So um, the, I'm happy to say that the CSU pathway is now clear and the IGETSI is clear all but the foreign language requirement. Um, unless the student happens to be an online student this fall or next spring, because we are fully online for that time. Um, number three, create a more reliable scheduling pattern. Uh, we have a fantastic accelerated college program called ACE. Um, and so this more reliable scheduling program will support well, all of our students, but in particular, those accelerated students. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And finally, we, um, our, we had a goal to strengthen our relationship um, with California State University Chico as their um, Bachelors of Business program can be done on our campus as we have an extension partnership with them for that. <clears throat> All right, so from these, <clears throat> excuse me, all of a sudden I'm very froggy. From these goals, we would like students to know that the programs are fully online and they are developed of the highest quality to support their educational goals. Um, and they do for sure have clear uh, pathways. So to be really uh, um, transparent for the families juggling or the students juggling families, jobs, and while the strangeness of living in a pandemic, um, they are fully online from start to finish. Um, through the grant, we have learned to be prepared for obstacles as they are inevitable. And it might shock you when I say that our obstacle has nothing to do with COVID. Our obst obstacle um, centers around the economic incentive we offered to faculty. We anticipated the amount to be a strong motivation for prompt completion, um, but it didn't quite work out the way we intended. And um, in all honesty, if it feels kind of like hurting squirrels. Um, so now we are thinking about the future. How can we um, plan better for this? And you know, one idea is that we either do more discrete um, payments based on or payments based on more discrete goals or increase the amount paid per high quality course. Um, so I'm really excited to hear if anybody else has dealt with this, how they overcame or how they've seen maybe another school overcome. So please share if you have experience. Um, as of today, I'm really happy to announce that these programs are fully online and are rare and to go for spring 2021. As I mentioned earlier, we have also removed the barriers for student access to complete the GE requirements, um, which was also part of our grant process. Um, and we chose to develop, um, let's see, we have three oral comms courses. And as of yesterday, we have three science lab courses. And finally, we have created more community awareness about these programs through our direct marketing. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brianne. All right, uh, as a reminder, uh, you can type your questions in the chat box. We'll uh, uh, talk about those at the very end of the presentation or we'll open up your mic and you can ask audibly. Now our third presentation from the San Diego Continuing Education uh, Unit down there. And this is a business IT program, take it away. Yes, hello, I'm Steve Major from San Diego Continuing Education. Um, I don't know if you have my slide deck in here, very good. Um, we, we were developing something that we call ICOM Academy, the interactive competency-based online micro-credentialing. Now, prior to this effort, we had no online course offerings. We did have hybrid classes where we did some instruction online, but this project really helped us get to a place where we now have fully online courses. Next slide. So we, we know we needed to develop our um, online courses. We, we had talked about this to some point, and I think uh, COVID-19 kind of really pushes you over the edge when it comes to, to doing this particular project. But, you know, we had a, you know, some goals in mind, um, as many people have mentioned, you know, the, the types of students. Well, I'll back up for a second. San Diego, San Diego Continuing Education is about adult education. It's about free non-credit education for people in career transitions. So um, we were trying to make our courseware more available to our students that had schedules to keep up with work schedules. Some of them you know, didn't always work exactly the same hours. And so we were trying to meet that need um, as well, um, give them the skills they needed in order to basically take on a new career challenge. Um, you know, dealing with some other challenges such as transportation insecurities, because some folks have a tough time getting to the college. So, you know, our, our, our base, we, you know, they seem to need quite a bit of assistance. And, you know, we feel good that we're able to offer them something without textbook costs, doing it online and making those resources available to our students.
Oh, Steve, are you done? Uh, you're on mute, so. Oh, sorry, I must have accidentally hit the key. Sorry about that. Um, next slide, please. Um, relevance to students. What I have here is I have a, a video to show you, a quick, uh, you know, four minute video. So we'll just kind of, if you can go through and play that. I'm not picking up audio from this. Yeah, sometimes in Zoom. We have online educational we... program to provide adult learners with fast, free, flexible job training and extensive career placement services. The ICOM Academy or certificate programs can be completed in as few as, as five months. And it's been designed for flexibility. So our adult students who are working can easily attend the ICOM Academy. ICOM Academy could potentially house hundreds of online career options for adults. But our initial launch will focus on small business entrepreneurship and information technology. Initially, our first programs will be small business planning, Linux server administration, mobile application development, Python programming, and virtual data center. What's great about ICOM Academy is that students not only learn from me, the instructor, but they also learn from each other. I know a lot, I am the subject matter expert, but I assume that I don't know everything. Students are great wealth of information for each other. This interactive medium allows students to interact on the projects. They can work together through the channels that we offer them, whether it's online live or through other interactive mediums. Community colleges can be life-changing for people, particularly when they have robust offerings through their continuing education decision help people pursue career changes and help people get back on their feet and importantly often provide a gateway to the middle class. We're delighted in 2019 to shine the spotlight on San Diego continuing education. What makes the ICOM Academy unique is that programs are short and intensive but also flexible. Students will be able to learn on their own time and in their own space, yet every class includes scheduled faculty-led instruction and peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. In the future, our support services will also be online. Some student support services can be anything from career planning to development of your education plan. What are all the courses that you need to take in the program? And what are your future goals? The students are completing career training programs that are industry recognized and state approved. Our use of open educational resources means zero textbook costs for our students. Our courses are generally short term and many can be completed in five to 10 months. ICOM Academy will actually improve the way adults learn online and that will absolutely be a game changer for future online instruction. This is the fastest, most flexible way to earn a micro-credential. San Diego Continuing Education is reinventing distance education with this ICOM Academy. Thank you. Um, so um, our approach to doing this was to work with a um, outside. So, so our strategy, um, next slide. Um, our strategy um, for this was to work with um, Ease Learning, a outside um, developer, um, instructional designers, in order to work with our instructors. We had um, two instructors per course work with the instructional designers to come up with the curriculum, to come up with discussion boards, to come up with assignments activities so that we could integrate um, both the teacher to student interaction as well as student to student interaction and kind of made that integral to you know each module that we went through in this curriculum. Um, with lessons learned, I, I kind of heard someone else say, you know, it's like herding herding squirrels. We were using the term herding cats in our in our um, our courses. 
Um, the other thing that we saw was the fact that it took, um, the amount of time it took for us to do our first course, um, I don't think we set our, our benchmarks right as far as how much time it would actually take to do this with all the sessions and everything in order to get this development project. And so our first course really paved the way for the future courses that we did. So um, the amount of time it takes in order to develop these courses you know, it could be a bit more, especially when you're, you know, trying to fit that into an already busy schedule as we were, you know, trying to convert everything immediately to online due to the COVID-19 piece. So, um, you know, we found that what we learned in our first round of course development certainly helped us as we kind of move forward um, through the development cycle. Next slide. So with our product accomplishments, we had actually, um, it initially planned to do 11 courses online and we we're gonna do it across subject areas. And we were gonna start with our IT program and then because our IT program already had some skill sets in using online technologies, we all use Canvas and um, most of us were using a product called NetLab Plus. And NetLab Plus gave us the ability to use actual physical gear, routers, switches, and then we had virtualization with, of servers and platforms so that we could make these, um, this equipment available to our students online. And so we integrated our, our campus, our, our, our Canvas with our NetLab in order to basically value add, you know, make it so that the students didn't need to purchase anything, materials, equipment, or resources in order to go through technical labs with this courseware. Next slide. Um, if, if we can click on this, what we have is this is a, a link to one of our learning objects that was put very early in on our courses. So if we can kind of walk through this, it'd be an, an, an activity. Steve, I'm going to have to stop you and move on. We, we have just seven minutes for each presentation, but we are going to share these slides. Yeah, so we, we can go down, go down in the slide deck. What I want to do is kind of hit on um, at the end. So again, we were planning on 11 courses. We ended up completing 29 courses by the time we were, you know, I think we got additional grant money, was able to do a, um, two more phases after our initial phase. And down below. And these were the courses that we had developed, mobile applications development, small business planning, virtual data center. This was in our first batch of courses and then move on. We went into a phase two, did some more development. Now these courses will be available, uh, I believe beginning, um, I guess some of them are available fall. And then our next round of courses, next page, we have some courses that we're going to make available this spring as well. So um, you can see we jumped out of the IT set and we've gone to many different areas of the college and um, make these online courses. And I believe that's it. I think is there another one. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Thank you, Steve and San Diego continuing it. Now we move to Las Positas College uh, program in supervisory management. Hi everybody, thank you. Um, I'm Vicki Shipman, CTE project manager. I also have uh, my colleague Vicki Austin with me and we'll be presenting about our project business access and quality, um, what we call our bank grant. And so go ahead and go to the next slide, please. A statement of need, primarily uh, we wanted to meet the needs of our employer. In fact, in 2018, the LMI in the East Bay showed over 3,000 students for an annual gap for business supervisory with uh, over 12,000 in the entire Bay Area. Our primary employer sponsors were LAM Research, Uncle Credit Union, and then of course our local labs. We have Livermore National Laboratory and Sandia. Uh, meeting for Guided Pathways, uh, definitely one of the pillars a clear pathway to employment and further education. And then of course, increased enrollment. Uh, we really need it nowadays, that's for sure. Next slide. 
Um, our primary goal was to improve existing online certificates or programs. We went with track one. Uh, we emphasized on increasing access, quality, and then filling in the gaps. Uh, we did this by training, course alignment, and then that gap I mentioned was uh, accessibility coordination. Um, our college was deficit in providing an accessibility coordinator for our online programs. Next slide, please. Relevance to students, I wanna share our video with you. It's about two and a half minutes long and you'll get to meet uh, some of the faculty that worked with us on the project. And I will share with you that um, the event that was taking place when the um, camera crew was out was our last event on campus. So if you could show the video, that'd be great. Cofitas College isn't just trying to expand access to online pathways in business, it's banking on it. The Business Access and Quality Initiative, also known as Bank, endeavors to eliminate barriers to business careers with high quality and convenient online courses. And with the college's goal of a fully online Certificate of Achievement and Supervisory Management in sight, it's safe to say that Las Positas College means business. Online removes barriers to completion and success. Students mention obstacles such as long commute, work and family responsibilities, lack of transportation, poor health, and lack of flexibility in schedule. Because of this, online education is a game changer for our students. So it's a supervisory management certificate. So as you can you know, probably imagine, you know, managers are in high demand in, in all sorts of industries, right? To learn those soft skills, to learn managerial skills. The challenge, providing Las Positas Colleges quality and collaboration at a distance. For the bank team, it was all in the design. As an instructional designer, I'm happy because each course will be reviewed against the OEI course design rubric. So I'm happy with the knowledge that these courses will be of high quality when they are sent out and offered to our students. And with new and updated courses submitted for peer online course review, business is booming. Las Positas is making bold progress toward its goal of creating or converting online business classes. Even as it makes strides on the professional development front, I think it's very valuable because right now, in terms of professional development, having this peer review allows the faculty members to see and get feedback in terms of the way they organize their classes, uh, the way it flows. The, the training definitely kind of puts you at ease a little bit because it breaks it down into bite-sized chunks and then you get this big OEI rubric that's finally filled out of like, yeah, this was good, but you also forgot to do this. It's more of a, you know, you're on the right track, you just gotta make these little fixes. The bank team's hard work is paying off. And when that work is complete, Las Positas College's unique and fully online supervisory management program will be open for business. Thanks to this grant, we'll be able to help shape today's leaders and provide them with opportunities they might not otherwise have. Online can be a lifeline to a better career and a better life for our students. Okay, thank you. If you could um, go to the uh, next slide, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Vicki Austin, and she's going to talk about obstacles and lessons learned. So our, our grant included um, training a number of faculty in and outside of business um, in our course quality uh, program, the online course development program, which was our internal course quality program, um, and aligning these 11 classes and um, uh, getting them ready so that the certificate would be available fully online and also um, training some additional um, reviewers uh, for our poker program. Um, and then finally, we wanted to send faculty to the online teaching conference, but I don't have to tell all of you that that opportunity um, was not available. Um, people attended the online version, but not the in-person conference. So those resources were shifted to other professional development opportunities because that was in line with the grant goals anyway, getting more instructors trained in online teaching. Um, 
the first speaker that you saw in the video and the final speaker, uh, Mary Laufer, runs our um, work experience program. And work experience has some very unique requirements in terms of state um, uh, forms and state things that needed to be done. So getting that fully online was a challenge in a different way because those classes are um, in some ways very different from other classes, but we are um, able to do that. We had a really unfortunate circumstance. We had a faculty member who um, uh, uh, succumbed after a long battle with cancer. So uh, his course, we sort of had to shift midstream to another faculty member who was already doing two courses um, under this grant um, of 11 courses. So uh, that um, was really challenging in, or in terms of completing uh, the work that that person had to do. Next slide, please. Um, you saw in the uh, video, you saw a peek at our website, but the website has um, multiple pages to inform the community about the project, the progress, our quarterly reports are on there and other resources that were developed as part of this grant. Um, 15 faculty members, not just in business, but also outside of business, completed the online course development program. Um, and uh, some of them will go on to create good quality courses in other departments. Our um, local uh, peer online course review team doubled in size with training that was provided from funds from this grant. And during this period of time, although it wasn't a grant objective, we received our statewide certification. So we are a fully certified um, local poker college. Um, I think we were the fourth in the state to do that. Um, and uh, there's a list there of how we did on all of our courses. Vicki, do you want to speak to uh, where we're going from here? Yeah, that'd be great if we have time. I know I think I already got the two minute warning. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're at time, uh, okay. but we so, will be able to share these slides later for the attendees. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you both, uh, both Vicki and Vicki from Las Positas. Moving on now to Berkeley City College, their program in entrepreneurship management. Wonderful, thank you so much. It's so wonderful to see familiar faces. I'm Joya Chabrin and I'm the Interim Dean at Berkeley City College overseeing this wonderful CVC OEI grant. Um, my faculty are currently teaching who've been incredibly instrumental in introducing us to an intentionally designed online certificate at our college. Um, Mary Clark Miller and Chris Bernard, I have to give them the, the kudos and they send their welcome as well. They're just really there for the students right now. So again, I am Dr. Shabrin and I'm introducing Berkeley City College's new business management and entrepreneur certificate of achievement. Next slide, please. So like many of you, most of our students at Berkeley City College are 70% part-time, balancing work and school, marginalized and linguistically diverse. They need to be able to have opportunities that increases their skills so that they can in, in, intentionally increase their, their um, earning capacity. So this certificate was designed in, in that respect. And basically with regard to the certificate, it provides a clear on-ramp that is stackable if they would like to an AA degree, but also a new career, um, as well as free OER resources, student-centered, as well as user-friendly. So in the sense where we, of course, designed this before our pandemic, the intentionality regarding the certificate was using the data from our campus to see what did our online programs look like before the CBC OEI program funding? What did our retention rate look like? And we realized we had a population of students that enjoyed online learning and we needed to figure out a way to step our game up to provide the, the resources and supports and the accessibility and the integration of, um, of a fully intentionally designed online class um, benefiting from the CBC OAI's trainings and support and funding. So thank you. Next slide. <laughs> so the project goals were short-term industry valued. We didn't build a, a AA degree, but we built in a um, 19 and 20 unit certificate, which we will hear about later, again, stackable to a degree. And as someone mentioned, I won't read regurgitate what my colleagues stated, but according to the LMI data, there's a many jobs in this in this sector. And so it was designed, um, that's why we chose both 
business as well as we um, designed a multimedia arts degree, which I can send information about later for those of you who are interested in that. And again, we aligned it to our um, vision for success, which was also mentioned earlier. So we'll go next slide. <laughs> Um, so again, this is our um, management and entrepreneur certificate. And again, it's designed to basically think about what is needed to become a business owner, create your own business for self-employment, for management. Um, what our Career Education Advisory Board um, shared is that many people come in to the field thinking that, you know, they wanted to be um, tech, you know, technology experts and kind of looking at my notes here, but wanted to um, build their skills to start their own, their own startup. Well, what this program provides the knowledge, the skills and the competencies to do that and looking at not only just accounting, but what does it look like as it relates to the ethics and leadership of business? What do our management practices look like? And what is the macro and the micro economics impact? So all of these, these, these student learning outcomes, these competencies, these skills are directly needed for us to get this on ramp and to, to start a new career in business. And hopefully if interested, continue on. So it's portable, it's short. 19 to 20 units. What's great about our 100% online is the first, honestly, at Berkeley City College. We've had hybrids. We are having online classes as a result of the pandemic, but this is intentionally designed to be a full one-year program that a student can complete. And we also are building relationships through our Career Education Advisory Committee with our local employers so that our students can get work-based work learning experiences as well as it relates to the certificate. And that was something our Career Education Advisory Committee recommended as we continue to re build relationships with them in our Chamber of Commerce. So I, I kind of rushed it because I felt like we were going out of time, but next slide. <laughs> Um, so our project accomplishments, we couldn't have done it without you CVCOEI. We really appreciate this funding and hoping to continue to do this for all of our programs because what's been incredible is that, you know, we've been able to launch this new intentionally designed online certificate. They're done in a year and we were able to um, access trainers that not only provided opportunities for our business faculty be, to be trained, but we were able to open it up to our other faculty members so that they can improve their um, online curriculum construction and practices as it relates to our, our students who, who are taking our online classes. And then we also too are, are looking forward to becoming a hopefully a Poker Review College. I'm really excited by what I just heard from my, my partner college and maybe reaching out to you, Vicki. <laughs> but um, we, we, we are working on that. We have 15 train, another training happening. And again, all of this is um, because of you and, and the funding to ensure our efforts are intentional and our students have high quality online course designs so they can be successful. So thank you for the time to present today. And it's, it's a, a great, great, time to be with you all, even though we're not together. <laughs> we're on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joya. And I love the phrase intentionally designed as opposed to pandemics here. Let's get online next week. <laughs> intentionally designed. Very well put. For those not from California or our system, POKER stands for Peer Online Course Review. It's a process by which peers help other faculty uh, by aligning their course with our CBC OEI course quality design rubric. All right, moving on now to our program, also entrepreneurship from Santa Rosa Junior College. Take it away. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Daniel. I'm on, all right. Uh, my name is Daniel Weinsweg. I'm an adjunct professor at the Santa Rosa Junior College and uh, sit in the business department where our e-ship courses are nested. So over the years, the business departments have seen a, an increase in students interested in launching their own businesses. And this really tracks cultural trends relating to an increase in entrepreneurship, largely driven by market factors and low cost decentralized services. So as we launched the eShip certificate, uh, we started hearing students calling for more convenience and flexibility with class times, given who our students are. They're working professionals, they're uh, mid-career professionals. And so given the various schedules and staffing constraints, it just made a lot of sense to offer the eShip certificate online. 
and especially during the current times, um, we think there's going to be an increased interest and demand as employees displaced from the workforce need to reinvent themselves and become potential entrepreneurs. So having this e-ship certificate expand with most of the courses available online is allowing our students at the JC to have more, the support they need to succeed in the emerging market realities. So this grant, which we're really grateful for, it funded the first fully asynchronous eShip class, which was, uh, it's just wrapped up the midterm. And the learnings from this initial class, eShip 106, which is the capstone course for the eShip certificate, it'll be applied to the rest of the eShip courses in the hopefully near future as we strive to make a permanent eShip pathway that's entirely online, entirely asynchronous. So the goal of the project is to offer a pathway online, fully asynchronous for the eShip uh, certificate. And um, it's been challenging to do this, to be frank. Uh, yes, I am a millennial, I'm a digital native, but so much of the eShip course and curriculum has been really hands-on learning and project-based. And that's how the class has been run the last few semesters when we were together face to face. But thanks to uh, the amazing uh, staff in the distance education department at the JC and a plethora of really great online content, I've been able to keep the, the course content really re relevant and modern. We use LM the LMS uh, Canvas at the JC. And so it's, helped keep the course really experiential and really engaging, which is important to me. And I think it helps the students really apply the material in real time. So as I enter the second half of the semester, I'm growing in my confidence that the course, like it's in-person analog, is really leading to student success, both academically and professionally. The current class, like I mentioned briefly, is project-based. And so it depends on a high level of interactivity between the students. And this semester has been really, really disruptive in Northern California, as well as most other communities. We have had power shutoffs, evacuations, fires, and displacements of all sorts of types. And so this has uh, created some challenges because it's impacted students' ability to engage with one another and kind of keep cadence with the content. And so it's, it's tainted a little bit the, the alpha testing of the course and some of the student engagement along the way. And students are still able to complete assignments and make progress on their projects and uh, the, the course content. So by making this course 100% online, we're able to include a lot more folks who've been wanting to take this class but couldn't because they couldn't make the six to nine time slots or they couldn't make it during the day because of childcare concerns. And so by having more students able to engage in this very, uh, it's, not, it's not a didactic class. A lot of learning takes place from students bringing projects, visions, passions to one another and a kind of co-creative generative conversations. So by having more people at the table, there's broader perspectives, the project diversity is richer, and we're able to see some neat collaborations taking place that I hadn't seen in the in-person analog. So some of the lessons learned, um, first and foremost, I was not excited about making this course 100% online. So much of the richness of my experience as a teacher comes from being uh, live in the flesh with the students in that creative space. But after learning a lot of the e-tools that are available and receiving some really good creative coaching from our DE team, I began to see how we could make this course actually even more hands-on and more engaging in the digital environment than I was able to in the classroom environment. As we're all learning, um, some of the, the human elements that are getting folks deeper into rapport students with each other and myself with the students is inhibited by the virtual confines. So I'm seeing maybe less honest feedback than I would in class and um, not so deep of one of understandings of students projects of one another. So they're not able to coach each other as much, 
which is relying on me as the, the professor of the class to be more of a coach than the peer coaching that I think was really rich on the in-person analog. Um, that being said, tools such as PlayPosit are making the videos really interactive and easy to format, simple to use. Prior to this course, I used about 5% of our LMS's functionality, but after getting a lot of coaching and support from our DE staff, been able to see just how powerful our LMS is and really use it to increase interactivity and creativity of the course content. My major accomplishment uh, is finishing the transfer and reformatting of this really hands-on course into a completely online environment and honing the course content and delivery more and more now is my focus as I'm getting real-time feedback. There's been a lot of IT support that I've been playing this semester and um, due to the, the LMS functions and dysfunctions, there's been some workarounds that I'm learning. So some other accomplishments include leveraging this environment to foster students' tech and communication skills. So now students can submit their assignments via YouTube as podcasts, as Instagram posts because of the, the projects that we're working on just really lends itself to that. So our department will be able to offer an eShip certificate almost entirely online in the near future. I hesitate to say by 2021 or 2022 because things are so in flux because COVID. And I'm really proud to have a great start to a great e-course. And as my students engage in this environment, I continue to focus on finding ways to make this tool even more humane and connective. And I just got to give a huge shout out to the distance education team for, for supporting me and supporting my students in our department and bringing this content, expanding who can be at the table. So thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. And now we have our last presentation from Woodland Community College, also an entrepreneurship program. Hi, everybody. I can't tell if my presentation is up yet or not. Oh, there it is. So I'm Annette Lee. I'm a professor of business and management at Woodland Community College. And um, we decided for our project that we were going to focus on developing also a very intentional online entrepreneurship certificate. Next slide. So in Lake County, uh, the focus of our entrepreneurship certificate was specifically to provide a vehicle of recovery for the Lake County economy. Um, it was planned to be our very first online certificate for Woodland Community College. And as we started deciding um, exactly why we wanted to target Lake County, it, it was clear right away because Lake County is, um, it, it, we're one of two centers of Woodland Community College. And it, the community itself has gone through um, such a very difficult time over the past five years. And we've lost over 60%. Um, of our land has burned, thousands of our homes and businesses are gone, and um, the history of Lake County has, has been small, small business. I mean, we've really been a gig economy before the gig economy was cool. And so we knew that this online entrepreneurship certificate would be a great vehicle of recovery for Lake County uh, students who needed to really get back on their feet and retool their skills and, and get their businesses up and running again. We also wanted to, um, make sure that it was an online, fully online certificate so that that access to the, the education and the courses um, was countywide and, and also college-wide, but specifically for all of our students in Lake County that might not so readily have access to face-to-face -face classes on campus. Um, and also um, it was really important for us to be able to provide those 21st century entrepreneurial skills that all of our employers are saying that they want to see in, in their employees. So not just, um, we're aiming our training, not just at those folks who wanted to, to um, become entrepreneurs or small business owners for themselves, but also take their own business practice and, and the practice of being a business professional out into the work world. So it's a transcripted certificate of achievement um, the online classes were intentionally developed to be asynchronous. Um, even before COVID, we in Lake County have recognized that synchronous online education um, presents issues um, in terms of accessibility. We don't have 
um, wide access to high speed internet in Lake County. So it was really important that we focused on asynchronous course development. And we knew that we needed to be collaborative with our community. So in, in the development of our courses, we've reached out to business professionals to help make videos and develop content that would be um, interesting and relevant to the students who are taking these classes. So next slide. So our high impact features of the certificate were that um, initially we knew that we wanted the certificate to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we were really intentional about making sure that we aligned um, the courses in, in the development of the courses with the Peralta College equity standards. That was done very intentionally on our part. And um, we also wanted to create mastery paths um, for a baseline technological readiness that we could then um, make customizable for portability. So in this first certificate with the entrepreneurship certificate, we have four mastery paths that, that have been developed. There's a, um, a presentations mastery path that focuses a lot on PowerPoint skills. There's the numbers of business. And, and, and these, are, um, these are very small micro units that are embedded within the certificate that, that will be portable that we can extract from this certificate and hopefully use in other certificates in our, in our business and CTE programs. So the numbers of business, which is uh, focusing on Excel skills, then we have online marketing technologies and cybersecurity. So these are the mastery paths that we've been developing for, for this certificate. Um, design consistency. We wanted to make sure that all of the courses in our certificate were consistent so that when students took the courses in the online certificate that they felt familiar to them and that each course, um, the design and the feel and the look and the branding felt similar to the last. And then um, we have uh, five of the courses so far are aligned with the CBC OEI rubric and we're continuing to put our courses through the poker process to make sure that, um, that we continue down that road. And we're also uh, um, using uh, OERs to make the courses more affordable for our students. So next slide. So lessons learned, um, just like some of my colleagues have said, we, we need an adjustment period so that we can establish those collaborative working relationships with our colleagues. Um, thoughtful planning regarding the project per, per participants. Uh, Oftentimes you, you, know, you hire somebody to develop a course, but when you look at um, contracts and scheduling, sometimes that person isn't necessarily the person that's going to be teaching the course. So, so some thought needs to go into exactly who is, is being placed on these project teams. Um, prepare faculty for workload. This is a big one. Uh, faculty need to understand how much time and energy it takes to design. Uh, a standards aligned course um, and also to, to take an OER um, textbook and design the, the supplemental materials that go along with OERs. Um, also when developing new programs, it's important to pay attention to the funding formula and success metrics. Um, we've, we designed this as a 15 unit certificate and um, you know, coming from Lake County campus, resources are, all, we're always scrapping for resources. And so um, I, you know, knowing that if we could have made it a 16 unit certificate that we'd get more points for the funding formula. You know, we hate to, to think of those things, but this is the world we live in now. And so I think it's really important to uh, consider that when we're designing new programs. Next slide. So that's, that's it. I thought we were gonna do question and answer, but it doesn't seem like we are. So I will say thank you very much for the opportunity. And um, I had a great time developing the certificate. <laughs> Thank you, Annette. I appreciate that. And thank you all to all our presenters. We've learned that this is not a, a simple matter of uh, creating an online course where there was an on-site course. We need to consider uh, motivating faculty, providing proper compensation and time for development of these uh, thoughtful, well-planned online courses, synchronous or asynchronous, or, or bits of both. Um, uh, from San Diego, we were introduced to the possibility of non-credit courses in this area. Uh, Las Positas reminded us of the importance of making these web accessible to comply with those regulations. So thank you all. Yes, we, we did run over time. I'm sorry for that. But if you have questions, I'd like to invite you to email them to us at grants at cbc.edu. Donna and I will make sure these are sent to the grantees today and we can solicit answers from them and, and share them back out for you. 
So I thank you all for uh, your attendance today and stay tuned for our next presentation, I believe in two days. Thank you much.